Yo, hello, this is Treebark Welfare, and you are about to watch a video tutorial of rendering a tile map in LibGDX. Thank. Bye bye. So, the first thing we need to do to render a tiled map in the game is to actually load the tiled map into LibGDX. And how we do this is by creating a tiled map object that corresponds to the tiled map. This tiled map object is a class created by LibGDX that holds all the information of a tiled map. So we'll go ahead and declare tiled map object here. We're gonna initialize it using a TMX map loader class also created by libgdx. So we'll see what I mean in a second. Tiled map equals new X map loader. So what we're actually doing here is we're using the TMX map loader class. We're calling its load method, and then we're passing it a string of the TMX map name, which is this right here. So this method returns a tiled map that a tile map object that contains all the information from your actual tiled map. So we can go ahead and run this and it should compile. Make sure it does. Good. And by the way, this is you have to have exactly the same name as your a tiled map here, but it does not need to be case sensitive. So we can go, it used to be, but now it's not anymore. So we can go like that even, everything works the same. Okay, next thing, now we have the tiled map in the game, we want to render it. So we need to make a tiled or orthographic, orthogonal, sorry, tiled map render. And so this is a child class of the parent class tiled map render. Um, and what orthogonal basically means as the child class of tiled map renderer is uh, just 2D. Because libgdx has support for 3D, they uh, differentiate with the 2D as orthogonal, which just means explicitly that if something's farther away or closer to you, it's not going to appear any bigger or larger. Normally, if something's farther away, it's smaller. If it's closer, it's bigger just without that, so a parallel kind of thing going on. And that's just what orthogonal means. And the orthogonal tile map render actually holds a tiled map where it gets all the image information that it needs to render on the map, which in, and it actually draws it on the screen. It doesn't go through any other systems or anything like that. So how we actually create, initialize this is we go tmr, graphic, Render. And because it actually holds an instance of a tiled map that it renders, uh, we have to pass it a tiled map either in the constructor or we have to set map later on. So I'm actually not sure you can construct it without a tiled map initially. But orthogonal, sorry. Orthogonal. And now if we go ahead and run its render method, let me just fix the space in here actually. If we go ahead and run its render method, <coughs> tmr.render, and notice there's a problem. See here, it's only rendering the bottom two tiles of our tiled map here in the left corner, bottom left corner of the screen. And if we take a look at the tiled map, no thanks, it, uh, it's these two tiles right here. So why it does those two tiles specifically, I don't know, but the problem is that because it's drawing it directly on the screen, we also need to define a view to the tiled map render because it doesn't know, it knows what to put on the screen, but it doesn't know where. And how we actually define a view is we use the camera class. So specifically we use an orthographic camera, same thing, camera could be 3D, orthographic camera is explicitly 2D. A graphic camera, just call it camera equals a new. And we can actually initialize it here because we don't pass anything in the constructor. When we how we actually define our view is we do this set to ortho method on the cameras. Camera dot to 
And if you look here, it's actually doing is setting the camera to a projection. So the camera works with like a matrix. So you're setting it to this type of projection. So it creates the matrix and a whole whatever. Um, yeah, but it's setting it to a projection. And we're going to put the false here. It just gives you an option to, it's called the Y down Boolean. So we can count from the, the Y axis going downward instead of upward. So set like one, two, three, instead of one, two, three. We're not going to do that. I'm just going to do normal. And then we'll pass 512, 512. Now, this is normally the viewport width and viewport height of your viewport. But if you don't have a viewport and you put this in, it will just default that to the height and width of the camera. So that's what we're going to use here until we actually get to the viewport. Now, we've defined a view, which because it's 2D, a good way to actually conceptualize this view is as a rectangle within the game space with an orientation and a position that anything inside this rectangle is visible to the player and will be drawn on the screen and that view anything that's outside the rectangle is not visible to the player it's a very simple way to think of the camera just when it's only 2d it works or it's correct now uh to pass that view to the tile map renderer do tmr.setView and our camera and then now if we run everything, it should give us the whole tiled map. Perfect. Now there's a few things we'll notice here. First of all, um, let's we should be able to translate the camera. The camera has a position now in the game space. Now I should also mention that the tiled map itself also has a position. That's how you check the relative position and where to draw the tiled map on a camera. And that position is the bottom left corner of your tiled map will be at zero, zero. So if we move the camera, say we were to move it, camera dot translate 256 to the right. All right. Oh, now I'm sorry. Um, why we put 512, 512 here is the height and width of the camera, I want to say, is because the tile width and the tile height also, it's a square, so width, height, same thing. Um, it's 32 tiles by 32 tiles, and then each tile is 16 by 16 pixels, making the total dimensions of the map 512 by 512, 32 times 16. That's why you put 512, 512 there. And so if we translate it 256 to the right, what we should actually do is see half of the tiled map on uh, the left side of our screen. And then on the right side of the screen, we'll, we should see black but we are not gonna see that because of an issue and I'll show you this in a second. So we're actually seeing the correct portion of the tiled map that we should be seeing, but it's on the wrong side of the screen. The camera kind of like showed us what's not visible to us, but it didn't actually move. Now what's happening here is when we do camera.translate, we're actually not translating the entire camera, we're only affecting a small portion of the total calculation to move the whole camera. <clears throat> so we need to tell it to recalculate its things, all its, you know, its movement, position, whatever. And the reason it doesn't do that here, by the way, is because then it would have to recalculate everything for every change you do. And so that would be very intensive on your system. If you calculated maybe, you know, 10 things a frame, Instead of that, we make all the changes, and then it processes the changes when you update every frame. So camera.update. So this is an efficiency, uh, it is for efficiency, but we have to have camera.update to complete the rest of the calculations. So now once we update, you'll see it's on the correct side of the screen. And uh, now another thing, let me bring that up again. One thing we also need to address is if we stretch out the window, yeah, if we stretch it back, we see that there's this weird flickery after image. Now I can actually render uh, once, if we make it so it only renders once, right? And we'll just comment this out for the time being. Right, so basically we put the whole render thing so it only gets to run once in the create method. You'll see we get this flickery image here. So even after just one render call, we'll still leave this image. Nothing's rendering this right now. It's just left over on the screen. 
And why specifically that happens, we don't care. But all we need to know is that because that happens, we need to clear the screen before we render any frame. And not just specifically because of that tile map renderer rendering, but any other thing that might leave some ugly remnants on the screen. And to do this, we actually use this method, or this call right here. So I don't remember it. It's not anything you need to understand the components of. Um, but this is the call to clear the screen, something with the GL, then GL clear, and something with the color, black, who knows, but it just, it clears the screen. So now if we do that, run that same thing, we'll stretch it out, stretch it back, and there's no flickery here. But as we're stretching out, you'll probably also notice our aspect ratio is getting messed up. If we even go full screen, we have a full rectangle here. When this is a square map, the whole thing gets warped. So how you actually account for that is using a viewport. What the viewport does is it manages a camera and it manipulates that camera so that when uh, the tile map render or the sprite batch or anything is past that camera, it knows to render everything or draw everything on the screen in a certain way so as to maintain the aspect ratio of the game in a desired fashion. So <clears throat> there are many types of viewports depending on what you want, but we're gonna use a fit viewport. And this will create black bars on the side of the screen to maintain the aspect ratio. Something, some viewports will extend the whole game so you're only seeing a portion of it, but it fills up your whole screen. Others will just stretch it and you'll lose the aspect ratio. It's whatever you want. So we'll use a fit viewport, call it viewport. Tools. Uh, well, actually not, we're gonna initiate it here because we need to pass it a camera. And this camera is no longer going to be our main camera. So we can actually just put this only in the create method. Our main camera is going to be the camera that's held by the viewport. It manages a camera and that big camera becomes the new main game camera. And so whenever we need to interact with our camera, we'll access it just through viewport.getCamera. And so here we'll do viewport equals new fit viewport. And then we pass it first the dimensions and then the camera it will manage. Now, if we didn't pass it a camera, it would actually just create its own camera. So you can have it like this and it will still compile with no issues. And then, so here we don't actually, oh, we don't need this set view render anymore. Yeah, get rid of that. But uh, here we no longer will update the camera, but we'll update the viewport. And this will automatically update the camera for us that it manages. So we don't need to bother with that. But the viewport to maintain the aspect ratio, it fills up the, the screen of our window. So it needs to really, so the viewport to maintain the aspect ratio, it renders, it manipulates the camera in just the right way given the uh, height of our window and the width of our window, so the dimensions of our window. And so we need to pass it that every time we update the viewport so it knows what it needs to maintain the aspect ratio. How we do this is by how we get the dimensions of our game window is we just do get width and get height. And just do this. Beautiful. Okay, and when we set the view here now, we're not gonna, the camera is now, the main camera is the viewport, is in the viewport. So we no longer access it through just a camera. We have to do viewport.getCamera. And I notice a problem here. Method set view orthographic camera. Notice orthographic camera, then the type whatever, is not applicable for arguments camera. So what's actually happening here is that the viewport doesn't, isn't specific to any type of camera. It just holds the more abstract camera. And though this camera is on a less abstract level, specifically an orthographic camera, it only knows of it as a more abstract camera. And this orthographic tile map renderer needs specifically an orthographic camera. So how we move down a level of abstraction here is we cast orthographic camera on this. 
Now, if this were not actually an orthographic camera specifically, let's say, or a different type of camera, like an isometric camera, I think is one type, uh, then this would compile, but when we ran it, it would crash. So <clears throat> uh, we just simply, you know, we cast orthographic camera to make it this an orthographic camera, so it works with there. And uh, one thing I also wanna go over that so I said that when we set this to ortho, when we set the actual view of our camera, that this really was meant for a viewport and not to specify the dimensions of the camera, though if you don't have a viewport, by default, it will make it those dimensions. So what this is actually used for, not making it dimensions, but it centers the camera on your viewport given the dimensions of your viewport. So the center of the camera is going to be at half of this value, half of this value, that coordinate. So if we made the camera, if we put zero, zero here, we wouldn't actually have a camera with no area. We'd have a camera of this area or this dimension that is centered on the bottom left corner of the screen, zero, zero. Or in this case, it would just be zero, zero. I think it's not bottom left corner anymore. Um, and so this is where the actual dimensions of our viewport, our camera, are now going to be passed. And this will automatically set the camera, whatever height and width it is, to these dimensions right here. So that should be everything. If we go ahead and run this, we'll see, oh, we still translated it, but you see that there's the black bar here. You can stretch it, aspect ratio maintains the same. Go full screen. Now let's actually undo that translation. Let's just comment that translate. Let's just comment that out for a second so you can see the full thing. Here, we'll go full screen. Perfect, beautiful square. As big as the screen will allow. We can change it to any size we want. It works great. Perfect. Now, a uh, cool thing you could do, I just want to show you guys how you'd translate the camera now. <clears throat> so if we want to translate the camera, what we do is viewport dot get camera like I said whenever we interact with the camera we have to go through the viewport and we simply treat it like it's the camera and that translate and then we'll do one zero zero now the reason I have to do three variables even though it's a 2d camera is because like I said it holds a more abstract just camera and that could be 3d so the translate always has the three coordinates but just leave this zero don't change it from anything but zero because if you do, then our screen will actually disappear. Um, yeah, but so now we're gonna translate it one little pixel to the right every time. And you're gonna see this actually will create movement. So our camera is moving very slowly to the right. And so this is how you would, you'd set this up with like a, if, you know, input, gdx.input.iskeypressed, right? And then you do this, otherwise left. And then that's how you'd actually make the camera pan with the player movement. Or you could even just translate it to the difference between the player's position and the camera, but you get the idea. Hello, this concludes the video tutorial of rendering a tiled map in LibGDX. This has been Treebark Welfare. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.